Good morning. Welcome to the DFS Summer YouTube channel. I am Razzle11, and you can find me on Twitter at Razzle11Grinds. I'm going to take a look at pitching for today, Wednesday, July 5th. We have an 11 game main slate this evening. Uh, I'm not really sure about any weather, possibly in Chicago. Um, so having our weather station updated yet this morning, I just know here in the Midwest there is some rain around. Um, but let's take a look. At the top, we have Justin Steele, who happens to be left-handed, who happens to be taking on the Brewers. Uh, what that means is he's going to be one of my top options. Uh, he's actually been better away from home, uh, which is a great sign for this game. Uh, strikeout numbers are better on the road. Walk numbers are, are down. Uh, hits, everything overall. Uh, ERA is up a little bit, but obviously ERA doesn't mean much to us. Coming off of a very strong start against Cleveland. He's allowed three runs in three starts since returning from the IL. You know, he's just been phenomenal this year. Uh, dominated the Brewers to begin the season. And like I said, I obviously pick on the Brewers with left-handed pitching. He's a minus 155 favorite. So for me, it's kind of a no-brainer. I do wish he was still in the 9Ks, but I can't be too picky. Uh, Pablo Lopez against a weak Royals offense. Uh, Maya, Kenta Maeda worked out really well for us yesterday. So we're going to go back to a Twins pitcher. Uh, issue here is my uh, Pablo Lopez has been much worse at home. So there are some worries there. Uh, he hasn't been phenomenal against the Royals. Uh, he has beaten them twice this year, but uh, they haven't been clean games by any means. His Cades have definitely been there for him uh, against Kansas City. So uh, that is something we like to see. Uh, one of the starts was the, the bad one, um, and one was a great start. Ironically, the one at home was pretty bad. So, uh, But with that said, the Twins are a minus 250 favorite in this spot. Uh, I'm just going to have to go with Lopez. I do have some concerns with those home numbers, but uh, the matchup's too great for me to ignore. Senga, we were going to be on him yesterday, and then he was moved to today, uh, and Scherzer started. I am you know, certainly interested in him. He hasn't been as good and on the road, um, and we know the Arizona team is a dangerous lineup, but I do like the upside Senga offers. I'm not going to go too heavy on him. You know, at 10K, I think maybe a 15 to 20% share seems likely for me, but uh, I really let the, the ownership projections dictate what I'm going to do. Uh, I aim to be over the weight on the field on every pitcher in my pool. Uh, that happens, I would say, 9 out of every 10 slates. Some, you know, some slates I just have to match the field on somebody to make the rest of the numbers work. But, uh, you know, Senga is probably a 15 to 20% play. Hopefully the field's only around 10 to 15%, but uh, we'll see later in the day. Jose Barrios has faced the White Sox quite a bit in his career. Uh, absolutely dominated them earlier uh, in the season. Hasn't been as great on the road. Hasn't been as sharp the last few starts. Uh, so there are some worries there, but uh, and potential weather. Maybe he's a minus 125 favorite. Uh, I think we can go to him. Uh, Bassett was pretty solid yesterday. Made one mistake to Lou Bob, but other than that, he was really good. Uh, Barrios' K's are back, so... I think he's a fine option for us on the slate. John Gray going into Boston. It's been phenomenal on the road this season. Um, been rough in two out of his last three starts, though. A couple tough matchups with Toronto and Houston. Right now it is a pick em. The game total is sitting at 9.5. Uh, obviously worrisome. I'm wondering if it's going to be pretty warm. Uh, in Boston. Uh, that's something we'll have to look into weather-wise. Uh, K's have been down, so I do have some worries there. Um, right now, I'd say John Gray is probably a, a borderline play for me right now. 
with the lean towards being out of my player pool, which is a little shocking, but, um, you know, Fenway obviously offers quite a few runs, um, and Gray hasn't been all that great recently, so uh, probably going to jump off, but uh, Alex Cobb, minus 160, home favorite here. We know the ball does not travel very well at night in San Francisco. Uh, hasn't been super sharp over his last handful of starts. Uh, made his return from the IL and was decent against the Mets, uh, but not great. Uh, Seattle offers a increase in K ability. Um, you know, we just saw Logan Webb just absolutely dominate them on Monday. Uh, so Alex Cobb is going to be intriguing to me. Uh, as a home favorite in the game with, uh, I believe, the lowest total. Yeah, the lowest total on the day. So, um, you know, that tells us enough. Brian Bayo. I'm, I'm going to guess I'm going to be off of Bayo, but it's not because I want to be necessarily. Um, this Texas squad is obviously dangerous. But, and Bayo's trends are much better than John Gray coming into this one. Uh, throwing the ball really well. Obviously, some of that has been opponent-based, but, you know, I guess if there's any Boston pitcher equipped to take on this Rangers offense, it might be Brian Bayo. So maybe he's the one that I have to kind of include as a as a 15% play just in case he goes, goes off. But... Uh, you know, we'll see as my day goes on, uh, and I'll give updates to the DFS Army members with my final pool later in the day. Uh, no thanks on Lance Lynn. Gives up too many home runs, too many walks. I mean, strikeouts can be there, but against Toronto, I don't know that they will be there. Uh, so I'm just not interested. Bobby Miller uh, hasn't been great at home. Which is shocking considering this park is a, a solid pitcher's park. A few rough starts in a row. Uh, did bounce back a little bit last time out. I think he's going to be a perfectly fine option. He's not somebody I'm hurrying out to jam in. He is a minus 260 favorite, uh, which is, I believe, the largest on the slate. Yep. The largest on the day. Um, so that automatically is going to drive up his ownership. Uh, his price drop is going to help. Uh, I would guess maybe a, a 25 to 30 percent play for me, but uh, you know, it, I would think his ownership on DK is probably going to be greater than that, which is a little worrisome because I don't know that I want to be pushing 50 percent Bobby Miller. Uh, the way that Pittsburgh's offense looked, you know, last night even. Um, but Josiah Gray and against the Reds, this game has a nine and a half total, uh, which shocked me a little bit. Uh, Josiah Gray recently named the All Star team. Uh, his numbers at home haven't been great, but his last couple starts have been really strong. He's capable of shutting down just about any team, uh, so I'm gonna have to debate this one because the Reds have been scoring runs. Uh, but I think Josiah Gray could be a surprise on this slate. I just don't think he'll be owned much at all just because of Bobby Miller and then Seth Lugo. Another guy that's going to make my pool because, uh, well, the Angels lineup might be super weak today. Um, obviously, we know Trout to the IL. Uh, Rendon fall the ball off his shin. Uh, Otani left last night's game. Could be looking at a really watered-down Angels lineup for Lugo. And, you know, since his return from the IL, uh, four earned runs allowed in three starts. Case have been solid, not great, but uh, I think he's an option for us. Um, trying to find... He's a minus-170 favorite right now, so... Uh, yeah, I think Lugo and and Miller are going to drive down, you know, Gray to basically zero ownership, which is why I might be intrigued on a Josiah Gray, um, you know, 10% share. Dean Kramer traveling to the Yankees. Um, 
I don't think I can get there, but he's somebody that I use occasionally because there is some K upside. Problem is these home run issues. Uh, I just don't know if I can get there in this game. I'm trying to, in my mind, convince myself, but I don't think I can. Uh, Baltimore is a minus 125 favorite, but the game does have a 9.5 total. No thanks on Beto. Uh, Vasquez, I'm going to have to look into what he went back down to the minors and did. Because um, he's shown some pretty solid minor league numbers and was solid to begin the, his major league career with a couple of decent starts. Uh, maybe we sneak him in for some shares. Uh, I'm just not sure. Uh, maybe we shouldn't even pick on you know, this game at all with pitching. We'll have to take a look at the weather in New York just to see, uh, because obviously we know home runs can definitely happen. But, um, you know, kind of looking at the, the rest of the names down here. I have a little interest in Soroka. Um, return to the majors and look decent. Uh, 7Ks against Miami, but did allow two home runs. Uh, we know Cleveland doesn't have a lot of power, uh, so that kind of intrigues me. Um, he's a minus 165 favorite, but the game shockingly has a total of 10, um, which is really weird. I know Atlanta's offense should destroy Cal Quantrill, but being a minus 165 favorite um, means that Cleveland's going to have an implied run total over four uh, in the spot, but... Uh, Soroka is at least intriguing to me. Another one that's intriguing would be Adrian Hauser taking on a Cubs team uh, that's so-so. Uh, Hauser looked good against the Mets, but just not sure if I want to get there. Um, obviously, he's an underdog to Justin Steele, uh, but the game has a total of just 8.5. So I think Hauser probably is an option, you know, I think there's enough ability for 20 plus DK points to put him in my player pool. Um, he wasn't even, you know, dominant against Houston and still put up 20. So I think there is a route. How often? I'm not really sure. But, uh, you know, zero interest in Graham Ashcraft, even though he kind of righted the ship a little bit against San Diego last time out. Um, I just want to see it more consistently from him because prior to that, he'd been absolutely atrocious. Uh, and then uh, while we know Washington is pretty weak offense, uh, the game total in this game is really head scratching. Um, so I, I'm going to have to side with Vegas on that one just because I'm not sure, you know, what to do with Ashcraft. Um, but like I said, we're just going to play the wait and see game with him because he's flashed some big time upside. But he's been absolutely atrocious this season. So, uh, well, there we have it. There's a look at the slate. If you enjoy what I bring to you, please hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Turn the, the notification bell on to get an alert anytime we drop videos at DFS Army. I'll put links in the description below if you want to join us. Uh, get access to our tools, coaches, Discord. You can use promo code RAZ. That's R-A-Z for 10% off your monthly. Or, I believe you can still use Summer 50 for 50% off your first month with us. So, as always, best of luck, everybody.